Good day and welcome to today's webinar, The Virtues of HPE Mobile Center 2.0. This webinar is brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Uh, next slide, please. I am your host, Chris Trimper. I am a QA Engineering Manager at Independent Health in Western New York, also the Western New York uh, chapter leader for the Vivit chapter here and also a leader on the Performance Engineering SIG. Today's speakers are David Landsberg, he's the Senior Product Manager at HP Enterprise, and Alan Indinsky, the Director of Product Marketing at HPE. David leverages experience, foresight, insight, and data to address today's and tomorrow's biggest mobility challenges for the enterprise. He has years of experience in leading both small and large cross-functional R&D groups to deliver excellent results while increasing engagement, accountability, and motivation across the board. Alan has been an entre entrepreneurial and customer-oriented software product manager for over 10 years in the APM industry. He has strong expertise in enterprise software technologies and IT industry trends with a special focus on application performance management, mobility, and big data. Just a quick note on housekeeping. This is a live session and it is being recorded and recordings are available to all Vivid members. Uh, we will have a session Q&A, so please type any questions you have in the questions pane and we will have a time for questions and answers uh, towards the end of the webinar. Uh, also, there will be two live polls within today's webinar, and we ask that you uh, vote in a timely fashion so that we can review those and help drive today's session. To your right, typically, you will see a webinar control panel. Uh, here you can go to submit a question and type it into the chat, and we will see it, and we'll be able to answer those towards the end. Uh, so let's get started, and I'm going to pass it over to Alon, who's going to talk to you about today's great topic. Thank you, Alon. Thank you, Chris, and hello, everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, my name is Alon Ditsky, I'm Director of Product Marketing, and as you guys already know, in HPE, uh, driving the mobility agenda, uh, the go-to-market forum mobility agenda. And we're here today, uh, David and myself, to share with you a lot of great insights and a lot of uh, uh, exciting information about our new mobile application lifecycle solution and uh, focusing on Mobile Center 2.0 which is the heart and the gateway for our end-to-end -end mobility solution. And in HPE we have been working really hard on investing and shaping the vision of our mobile application lifecycle story. Looking at customers and companies out there that are trying to go through the digital transformation. They're delivering, delivering mobile apps and these mobile apps are becoming the forefront of everything they do. If we look at the banking industry, for example, and we had all these banks in which you went to the branch for years to transfer money, to deposit a check, today it's not the case, right? Most of us are just using the mobile apps, right? And if we think about all these big banks in the US, for example, today when we make a decision where to open our new account, we want to have a bank that has a great mobile app that allows us to do everything online. Whether it's transferring money, checking to savings, buying stocks, we want to be able to do it uh, um, quickly and efficiently on any device, anytime, anywhere. So I think that what we're seeing in the industry is that from mobile apps being something that supports the business, mobile apps are now becoming something that is the business itself. And when it's becoming the business itself, it needs to perform, it needs to provide the end users with great user experience. Because at the end of the day, it's all about having this five-star application on the App Store, having five-star application on the Google Play Store, on the Apple App Store, something that when users are seeing, there are lots of downloads, users are engaged, they're really happy with the app, it's a great performance, and when you look at all the rankings on the App Store, users are posting great reviews. And this is what you want your business to be. This is, you know, the new world of B2C applications being put at the forefront of any new uh, uh, digital business that is trying to increase the engagement and disrupt this industry. So when we talk about uh, user experience, it's everywhere. 
and we just gave a good example of the banking industry, but what about being a traveler today? Think about us. We go to the airport, we take an Uber, okay? And just a second, kind of challenging with the slides, there's a tiny delay here, but hopefully I'll be okay. So when you get to the airport, um, you take an Uber, and this Uber takes you to the airport, and it's a mobile app, right? And when you get to the airport, you're trying to find where's the gate. Usually you use the airline app to check where's the gate. So once you got to the, de to the, to the gate, you're like, okay, so what now? Okay, I need to check in my baggage. Where should I check in? What is the check-in counter? What about my baggage? Can I check it online? What about having my boarding pass? So all these kind of things today are being done through the mobile app. Whether it's banking, whether it's an airline, whether it's a share ride like Uber and Lyft, all these things are happening through mobile apps. So it's everywhere and at the end of the day, it's all about the user experience. What was my experience taking Uber versus Lyft? What is my experience using HSBC versus Citibank versus Wells Fargo? What is my experience using United Airlines application versus American Airlines and the rest of the airlines in the US? So at the end of the day, it's all about this user experience and how we can deliver better apps uh, for our users anywhere, anytime. So first question, um, first polling question, Chris. All right, so we have our first polling question here. So what are the top characteristics essential to quality UX for you? So we have five options, check any of them that apply. Is it functionality, speed, simplicity, creativity or originality, or is it the defect rate? So you got the votes coming in now. I'm going to wait just a moment for these to come in. I'm very interested in seeing what, what is important to people. So I'm sure both David, you, and Alan are, are interested in this as well. Absolutely. Actually, we recently uh, ran a survey with some of our customers about this very same question. And here we can only offer you five answers, but we received a long list of different answers from different CIOs in the company. It was very interesting to see. Awesome. Well, just a moment, we'll close the poll. And well, we got to start somewhere, and I think these five are an excellent place to start. And we're, you know, ever changing and growing quality, so we want to make sure we get the best for our customers. All right, so we're just almost at 70% voted. So let's just go ahead and close the poll, and let's review these results. All right, so we have kind of results all over the board. Top two at 80 and 81% is functionality and speed. So it's both ranked in and tied at the top. Uh, right in the middle is simplicity, and towards the tail end, probably not in the scope at the moment for some folks, at 20% is creativity and originality, and at 24% is the defect rate. So I think this goes to show that much like myself, uh, people are concerned about impatient customers uh, with the functionality and speed of, of things. So let's hand over to yeah. you guys and let's hear what you think about this. Yeah, so thank you, Chris, for running that. And, and, and I'm not surprised. And this is aligned with the answers we're getting everywhere we go. So first of all, what we're seeing is that user experience has many characteristics uh, that are essential. I mean, you need the app to perform fast. You need the app to respond in less than two seconds to any click or any swipe on the device. At the same time, you need the app to to provide the users with great functionality. At the end of the day, I want to execute something. I want to uh, execute transfer between my accounts. I want to check into my flight. The app needs to function the way I expect it to function. It needs to be quick, easy, uh, to understand how to, how to use the application and, and use its functionality. At the same time, we're talking about defect rates. Is there anything more annoying than using an app that crashes on you all the time? No, it's really annoying. So. No matter how we look at it, user experience has many characteristics. And yes, the straightforward answers are usually functionality and speed. You need the app to function, and you need it to function uh, in great performance. And these are always the top two answers. But at the same time, yes, what about stability? What about device resources? How annoying is when an application is consuming too much battery con uh, power from your device? Think about you using a navigation application, for example. It truly, literally, it's your battery. This is also very annoying. Users are, are abandoning apps that are eating their battery because battery power is becoming one of the biggest concerns in the mobile industry right now. So, so many different uh, 
characteristics and, and, and areas within UX that you definitely want to measure and optimize over time to achieve that, that five-star application that we're talking about. David, any more insights to share uh, on the answers that we're getting from the audience? One of the interesting answers that uh, we received in that uh, survey that I mentioned was uh, security or privacy settings, an application that asks you to share more personal information than you're willing to share is impacting your user experience. It's part of the complete picture that you uh, painted earlier. Yeah, absolutely, David. This is a good point that, you know, people tend to think that security is not part of the game. But it's becoming a bigger part of the game uh, in terms of the, the, the amount of personal details that you need to share and in terms of making sure that the app is secure. And, of course, there are not any vulnerabilities that expose personal details uh, uh, in the wild. So, for sure, security is part of the game. And we will elaborate about security even more uh, later in the presentation. So we're setting the stage and we are starting to talk about user experience and we are talking about the need to have a five-star application. And we're talking about the importance of measuring user experience and optimizing it in order to succeed in this new digital world. So when we look at user experience, uh, it's kind of hard to control. It's kind of hard to control because there are many challenges, especially in the mobile industry. So first of all, let's pick just one. Think about the device and OS fragmentation. I have iOS devices, I have Android devices. Within Android, I have, it's a jungle, right? The Android industry is literally a jungle, and there are tens or probably hundreds of different manufacturers, if you include all the Chinese and Taiwanese non-branded devices, there are probably thousands of different Android devices that are out there in the market. So if you think about all these devices, each one of them has a different screen size. Each one of them has a different OS that was customized. It's Android kernel, but it was optimized for the specific device. But what about, you know, different versions of OS running on these devices? So each one of the devices can run KitKat, can run uh, Jelly Bean, can run Marshmallow, can run any different Android OS. So what about the network carrier? I mean, users are, are using these phones in different carriers around the globe. What about 3G, 4G, LTE, and Wi-Fi connections? Uh, all these connection types perform in the same speed. At the end of the day, there are multi-form factors in this industry. Multi-form factors when it comes to OS, networks, mobile carriers, devices. What about the specific version of my application? I have multiple versions of my own app at any point in time. I mean, I have a few versions running in production, and why? Because today we're working in continuous delivery approach and probably we release new updates to the App Store every month, every week sometimes, sometimes every day. So at any point in time, we have always the early adapters, you know, those guys that are getting the notifications from the App Store, hey, you need to update. And they go and they update immediately. At the same time, I have my parents. And my parents, for them, it takes some time. You know, they're waiting probably once a quarter. They're sitting down on the couch, connected to the Wi-Fi and, and updating their 100 applications at the same time but there are always late adapters when it comes to new updates. So at any point in time, I have a few different versions of my application in production. But when it comes to testing, when it comes to ensuring that I'm delivering great user experience, what is my strategy in terms of testing the different versions that I have in production right now? Should I test just 20% of my effort should be dedicated to the previous version, 80% to the new one? How do I look at it? How do I know how to track the version adoption? and basically adjust my testing coverage and testing efforts based on the version adoption out there. How many users adopted the new version based on that? I know the percentage and I know how much effort uh, I should uh, spend on the new version versus previous versions at any point in time. So very, very challenging. What about all the enterprise systems and all the backends? You know, when you go to banking industry, for example, again, this is a great example, even the airline industry. Sometimes, yes, you are using a very sophisticated, and sexy and beautiful mobile app. Behind the scenes, there is a mainframe, okay? It's still the old traditional backend and middleware, and at the end of the day, these are all impacting the end user experience. So if you need to, for example, optimize performance issues, sometimes you need to go to the middleware, to the TIPCO, to the mainframe, to all these traditional technologies that are still supporting, you know, these applications. At the end of the day, mobile is just the front end. This is not the end-to-end -end thing. So there's so many different things. What about the evolving technology? New iOS, OSs, new Android. I need to test on these OSs once they are coming out of the market and actually way before. 
So today you see mobile teams, I mean, when Apple is uh, releasing uh, the iOS for developers, they're starting immediately to, to do some beta testing on the new OS. So lots of different things in Roblox uh, to be able to achieve great user experience. So when we look at the qualities of the mobile experience, uh, when we look at the quality, or the qualities of mobile experience, there's so many different aspects, right? I mean, probably we have uh, things like uh, performance, uh, usability. You need the app to perform fast. You need the app to be usable. But what about making sure that the app is something that you enjoy using? In today's world, we really measure how fun is for the users to use the app because based on any research that we have conducted, it seems like users are really expecting the app to be something that are, that is bringing a smile to their face. It makes them smile. They enjoy using it. So it's not only usable, it's not only performing well, it's also something that provides the user with a wow factor, something that the users are enjoying using. And at the end of the day, it needs to provide true value for the users. So when we look at user experience, when we're trying to achieve this five-star application that everyone is talking about, there are different things we need to look at, and it's not just performance and stability, or not just availability and, and value. There are so many other things that we need to look at, from how the application looks like, to how usable it is, to how fun it is to use the app, and how many smiles. And, and we are bringing to our customers' faces. So lots of different things that we need to look at, uh, different form factors. We, that needs to be available, it needs to perform well, it needs to be secure, it needs to be usable, and we need to monitor the production usage to make sure that we have some big data insights from production on, on how the users are using the application in production, because guess what? We can leverage this data back into the testing and basically create a feedback loop. And that uh, will basically optimize the testing coverage based on true usage in production. What about compatibility? What about making sure that we're testing the app on different OS or different devices? What about making sure that the app is functioning really well on any combination of OS, device, and network? But what about performance? Is my backend ready to support one million devices in Black Friday? What about performance testing? So there's so many different things we need to look at when we deliver a mobile application and we really aim to have these five-star applications because the competitors are already doing all these things, right? And, and we need to, uh, to be at the front and lead uh, rather than being led. And I think this is the key goal uh, for, any, uh, for any organization out there that is trying to release a mobile app uh, that is becoming uh, the digital business front for that business. So, what can be done to focus on the UX earlier in the life cycle? And what we're saying is that starting to measure user experience when you roll out the application to the App Store is too late. It's too late because it needs to start way before, okay? And user experience starts from the first line of code. It's from that developer sitting in a room, sitting in a lab, developing coding. He wants to start measuring the user experience. It can start by measuring the user experience by having a few manual testers that can be the QA engineers or any other, uh, uh, any other developer friend that will test the app on a few devices, just interacting with the app, seeing how it performs. We start with that. At some point, you need to scale your go with some more automated functional testing. So you have probably a few devices, you have a few different OSs, and you are starting to automatically generate user flows that will be tested and executed on a few devices so you can get some, some more structured uh, functional testing. But then the app is, perf let's assume the app is functioning really well, what about performance? So you need to have some performance testing, right? You need to make sure that your backend can support the traffic that you're expecting. So if I expect to have one let's say 1,000 users at any point in time, I need to make sure that my backend can support it. So I need to be able to simulate that traffic before I go to production, because when I go to production and users are experiencing issues, it's way too late and I'm going to lose everything because they will you know, rank my app with two stars on the App Store and they will post uh, very bad reviews and negative reviews on the App Store. And from there, it's a very slippery slope.
So I need to do it way before I, I, I get to production to make sure that once I go to production and roll out the application, it provides the user with this great experience that we're all talking about. So based on the survey, based on Gartner, the first one is 85% uh, of developers say they understand the importance of the user experience. It's pretty straightforward, okay? 95% of mature DevOps teams focus on the user experience. So this is where everyone is, is going in terms of DevOps. And when we say DevOps, this is not a buzzword. We're talking about these teams where you see apps and ops collaborating together. When you see you know, developers starting to test the application with manual testing, then they go to more structured functional testing on multiple devices, automatic testing. Then they go for performance testing. Before they go to production, you also need to make sure that the app is secure. So you also run some security testing on the app before you go to production. Only when you know that the app is performing well, it's functioning well, and it's secured, you are ready to go to production. And only then you roll the application to production and basically you start uh, uh, looking at the reviews uh, that you're getting on the App Store. But guess what? This is the world of continuous delivery, the world of DevOps, the world of frequent release cycles. So when you think about the next release, it's all about measuring this uh, data in production, this real user traffic, what the users are doing, on which devices they are working, on which mobile carriers, and basically leverage these, these big data insights into optimizing continuously optimizing the user experience of the application, and we will give you a few examples on how we basically, in HPE, provide you with a solution that allows you to take all these great big data insights from production back into testing to optimize the testing coverage and to make sure that our testing environment is better representing uh, the true usage in production in a way that we can continuously improve the user experience of our end users. So HPE software helps customers to deliver high quality mobile applications and ensure a consistent, positive user experience under any circumstance. This is our goal. Our goal at the end of the day at HPE software is to help you guys provide and deliver great mobile applications that are performing well and making your users smile and allow them to interact with your business in a way that they will just increase their engagement and their business uh, with your organization. And with that, uh, I would like to end it over to Chris for the second polling question. Chris. Thank you very much. So we have our second polling question for everyone today. It is, which user experience metrics are you able to measure today? And we have a couple different types of metrics here. App functionality, app performance, insights into app usage, user behavior and flows, or uptime and availability. So select one of these that you're able to measure today or which one you're able to measure most today. I know for me being in the performance engineering SIG, uh, the app performance being near and dear to my heart is something that uh, I, would, I would throw a bullseye on for this one. Yes, Chris, one of the things that we see is that uh, it's no longer an ops team responsibility to uh, monitor uh, these metrics. We see more and more of the testing team as part of the DevOps movement, ensuring that they can measure these different metrics as part of the testing work that they do. Yeah, while well, we're waiting for the results to come in, it's interesting you mentioned that because my team is directly responsible for building our uh, app performance tests. Uh, so the ops team, they'll manage the actual servers themselves, but we manage um, synthetic transactions, monitoring them in production to help folks understand, you know, how things are performing and act as that early warning signal. You're right, the, the worlds are converging. No longer are, do we have these brick walls, we heave things over, you know, we've broken down those walls and we're all working together. Uh, and it's, it's a very exciting future for, for all of the, the IT folk out there and business too. So we got about 70% uh, voting in again. So uh, let's close the poll and let's move forward and check out these results. So we kind of have a very diverse um, set of results. So at the top, 33% uh, is app performance. Uh, next tied for 25% is app functionality and uptime and availability. And at the tail end, both at 8% is insights into app usage and user behavior and flows. 
So the top three again, number one, app performance, tied for a second, app functionality, and uptime and availability. Let's take a quick second and uh, you know, hear your thoughts about that based on the studies and other customers that you've worked with. Yeah, Thank so you. actually, actually, um, these are, this is really interesting. And, and you know, when you look at customers today, and we look at our customers, I mean, in any forum, whether it's this webinar or any other group that we have, and traditionally, we're all used to, you know, monitor the performance, the availability of any application that we have out there, right? I mean, whether it's a web app, uh, we still, you know, synthetically monitor this application, you know, from a few different places. Sometimes we just have some, some system monitors on our servers that just constantly, you know, monitor the application. But when it comes to mobile apps, we're basically seeing new challenges and new things that we need to monitor. What about monitoring the better usage, the device resources? What about measuring the different user flows um, on the mobile app so we know exactly what the users are doing? What about monitoring also crashes and errors on the devices? So when it comes to mobile, I mean, we see customers uh, um, trying to go beyond just performance and availability of an application because the mobile industry introduces more things and more, th and more factors and more elements that need to be monitored. And I think this is why uh, we're seeing a very diverse answers because the traditional answers would be availability and performance. But with mobile, we're seeing more and more new challenges and new areas where we want to monitor our application. David, any, any additional insights that you'd like to share with the audience? Sure, there's two things as a product manager in HP that I am very interested in monitoring. One of them is data usage. So I travel a lot, and my data plan in uh, mobile uh, overseas is extremely expensive, and it finishes way too quickly. And so any application that's uh, using too much of my data plan, I uh, typically just shut off or sometimes delete if I see abuse of data usage. And the second item, as a product manager, are features that the users are actually using, or maybe even more interestingly, interestingly not using. Uh, you know, I invent features all the time. That's part of what product managers do. And I really want to know if my uh, user base is using them. Otherwise, if they're not using them, I can remove them, try not to test them. We can all be more efficient. I can figure out what I did wrong when I was building the backlog in the first place. So those are two items that interest me as a product manager to measure. Okay, great, David. So uh, with that, I would like to shift gears and introduce the HPE mobile apps, mobile application solution. And we have been working really hard at R&D, product marketing, and product management in HPE, and we collaborated together uh, to shape our vision and come up with a solution that we believe that is an industry leading that goes from, you know, the manual testing at the beginning through security testing, functional testing, performance of testing, to the monitoring part and back into testing by basically creating a feedback loop from production back into testing. So we believe that the right way today in HPE to approach user experience and the journey that we're offering our customers to go through is a journey that looks at the end-to-end -end story of the mobile application delivery cycle. Okay, it starts with the first line of code and it goes till the next release cycle. So for us at HPE, we have Mobile Center 2.0 that was just announced in the last HPE Discovery in Las Vegas a month and a half ago. And Mobile Center 2.0 is the heart and the single gateway, the gateway for our end-to-end -end mobile application solution. So our mobile application solution starts with security testing. I mean, we want to make sure that the app is secure right before we even start, you know, continue with development. Then we go through interactive testing, right? And we need a few, a bunch of developers and QA testers to test the app in the lab. But then we also want to have the ability to have automated testing. So we want to have a few devices connected to the server where we can basically record a few user flows and execute them on a few devices, right? But what about, what about real devices versus cloud devices? Do we have all the devices on-prem? So yes, it's a good advantage to have a few devices on-prem connected to the server because we have more control on the device. But if there are more devices that I need to support, how do I do that? So now with Mobile Center 2.0, we have, for example, a unique integration with AWS Device Form. So we're a vendor that allows you to do hybrid testing. So you can 
mix and combine devices on-prem as well as spin up uh, uh, devices on the AWS device from very quickly to have the full coverage but still having the benefits of, of free devices on-prem. So, so the application is ready and automated functional testing has been performed. What about performance testing? Is my app ready to support the 1,000 users, the 10,000 users, the 1 million users concurrent? So I want to be able to have a cloud testing solution, a mobile cloud testing solution that allows me to simulate, you know, millions of devices at the same time from different locations, different networks, and uh, to be able to test and to, uh, uh, you know, do a load testing against my, my, my infrastructure to make sure that my application, my service is ready to support the expected traffic and production. So we are good with security, we have good with manual testing, automated function testing and performance testing. So we're going to production. Once we go to production, what about monitoring the application? What about having this monitoring uh, solution that allows me to measure and monitor the availability performance of my application in production? And I want to be aware and be proactive about any issue that may happen in production before my users are reaching out to me or sharing their reviews online in the App Store. But the coolest piece is the in-app analytics at the top left. This is where we basically allow, we allow customers to measure big data analytics in production, which devices are being used, which flows are the common user flows in my application, what are the specific OSs that my users are using, what are my app versions uh, that are being used in production, and looking at all these things, what are, where users are working from in terms of location and on which specific mobile carriers. Now, when we look at all these different form factors, we basically take all this data back into testing, because guess what? When I was testing my application in the first release cycle, I thought I know what users are doing in production. I thought I know what should be the testing scripts. I thought that I know which devices should be chosen for my testing environment. I thought that I know which carriers should be simulated. Yes, we know how to simulate network conditions and different carriers in testing. I didn't know all these things. I was in the dark. I thought that I know. But now I know because I'm in production. So if I have an in-app analytics solution, it automatically measures and provides me with insights, with the bottom line insights of which devices are being used, which carriers are being used by my users, which flows are the common user flows in production, which OSs are the most common OSs in production, how much battery consumption is my app using. If I have all these insights from production based on the real user traffic in production, can I use all this data back into my next release cycle, back into my testing environment, and to optimize the devices I'm choosing for my testing environment based on these insights, simulating the network conditions based on the networks that are most popular by my users, executing and generating automatically testing scripts, based not on what I think the users are doing, but based on what the users are really doing in production. Think about us measuring the user flows in production and being able to generate automatically testing scripts that represent the real usage in production based on the common user flows in production. Testing on the specific devices that are being used. If I don't have a device, I can provision this device on AWS device form. So this is the way we look at it. It's an end-to-end -end solution that starts from the first line of code, go through the different types of testing uh, into production, then creating this feedback loop, the true DevOps solution that allows you to optimize the user experience over time with every release cycle. And this is where we're heading. And with that, I think it's perfect timing to hand it over to David uh, to expose you to all the goodness and new exciting stuff that we have with Mobile Center 2.0. David. Thanks, Alon. So that was a great introduction. Um, to uh, mobile center and user experience testing in general. And as you could uh, understand from uh, Alon, there is a lot that uh, goes into mobile center. There's uh, many disciplinaries that we support across manual testing, automation, uh, performance testing, and so on. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to focus on the 2.0 features so we can get through those. Uh, hopefully you know some of the things that we already did, uh, did previously. If not, uh, please feel free to reach out to us after this session and uh, we'll find a time to make sure that you are familiar with all our uh, different capabilities. So we have five main themes that we worked on in uh, Mobile Center 2.0. Uh, the first being Amazon Device Farm. And let me explain what I mean by saying Amazon Device Farm. 
So up until now, Mobile Center was um, managing your private cloud of devices. You could have a secure cloud of devices that you have on-prem behind your firewall and uh, all managed via a single point of control that is Mobile Center. The devices could be in different locations uh, in your network, but they were all on-premise, as we say. And what we've done with 2.0 is we've allowed you to connect Mobile Center to devices that are hosted by Amazon Device Farm. So uh, if you install a connector on um, the cloud, you connect your connector to the uh, Amazon account that you have, any AWS account, you will get access to the long list of Amazon Device Farms uh, devices. And now you can execute your true client or your UFT scripts on those devices the same way you would on your local devices. And I'll show what that looks like uh, soon. Um, actually, if you can uh, move to the next uh, slide, we'll see a screenshot. And this screenshot is, uh, this shows the list, but what I'd like to do is perhaps I'll show it in the demo later on because the visibility isn't uh, clear enough. Other than the Amazon device farm, we've uh, worked a lot on our lab management capabilities. So I don't know if you can go to the next slide. I'll talk about what we did for lab management. The first thing uh, we did is we introduced device groups. So for companies who have uh, separate projects uh, inside their company and each project group might have a need for their own set of devices and perhaps you don't want to share uh, the devices. You might have some devices that are shared across the organization, some that are private. We've introduced device groups and of course the ability to assign users to certain device groups allowing you segregation and access to subsets of devices. And I'll show that in a live demo as well. In the next slide, what you will be able to see is another feature that we've added that's also related to lab management, and that is reservation capabilities. So not only do we allow for uh, group management of devices, but we can also reserve specific devices that might be more expensive or, or uh, just appear less in your uh, cloud. So if there is some resource that you have more people uh, using and you want to create a reservation for it, you can schedule it for a specific time window and you'll be uh, the only one able to access that. You'll, uh, the device will be locked for your needs. And of course, you can manage different reservations and so on. Next slide, please. Another big enhancement that we've had in 2.0 is the ability to really interact as well as record with the system applications. All the applications that come out of the box with, uh, on the springboard from the operating system. So you can now uh, record scripts that use um, the SMS application or the phone applications or the settings applications if you want to change Wi-Fi settings of the device during your business flow that can all be recorded now. Basically, we no longer require to instrument native applications. So if you have native applications and they have uh, been deployed to the device in some other way, maybe in MDM, there is no problem now in creating an automation script that interacts with that application as well as system apps all within one business flow. Next. A big move for us in 2.0 was the introduction of the integration with Selenium and Appium. So what you can do now as a user of Mobile Center is point your Appium scripts or your Selenium scripts to Mobile Center and it will execute it on uh, the different devices that are connected to Mobile Center. There's a few things that we've done to enhance the interaction uh, of just over vanilla Appium. For example, you no longer require a Mac computer to run an Appium script on an iOS device. If uh, you're familiar with Appium, it's an open source uh, solution for uh, mobile testing uh, built on top of the packages of Selenium. It, it does require a Mac if you're using vanilla Appium today. However, if you have iOS devices connected to Mobile Center, you can run your Appium scripts uh, on all these devices without the need for Mac. We also have introduced uh, capabilities uh, instead of just uh, UUID of a device that allows you more flexibility when you want to choose a specific device to execute a script on. 
So now if you're an Appium user, instead of just hard coding a UID of a device, just to choose a device based on your needs. I want an iPhone uh, 6 with iOS 8 and above, and we'll identify the um, device for you and allow the script to run that. We've added authentication and to Appium. One slide back, thanks. Uh, that allows you to do um, more enterprise-grade lab management. You can now see which Appium users actually using which devices at any given time and they can lock the device, they need to log in, of course. And one more capability on top of App Appium is the single app focus um, that you have in Appium doesn't exist uh, with the mobile center. So you could, in an Appium script, detail more than one mobile application, and it, we will install that as part of the script, and you can interact with multiple mobile apps as part of your test flow. So if you're testing some advanced scenarios that have interactions between mobile apps, all that can happen today with Appium and Mobile Center together. Thanks a lot. Next slide. We've also expanded our technology support. So we support now Windows 8.1, uh, as well as uh, iOS 10 beta that was re recently uh, released. Um, we're actively working on Windows 10, so that should be coming soon. Um, that is something ongoing that we do all the time to make sure that we're up to date with the latest versions. Uh, for example, iOS 9.33 beta 4 is out. We support that as well. Next slide, please. And last but not least, we've deepened our integration with our analytics tool, which is AppPulse. So in previous versions, what we did was we brought over the Fundix score, which is the user experience score that you get with our analytics tool at Pulse, as well as stability, performance score, battery, and uh, uh, data usage. But now we bring in really the detailed lists of devices and operating systems from, the, from production use, and you can see them broken down by user popularity or by the crash rate or by response time and therefore you can focus your uh, testing that much better um, as you're going through testing the next version. Okay, and next slide. David, it's, it's time to set a product in action. Excellent. So I'm going to share my screen. It should be coming up soon. Let me know when you can see my screen. You can see, David. You can go ahead. Excellent. So what I'm showing you today is uh, HP UFT. It's our functional testing tool. Some of you might remember Q2P. This is the latest version of that. And if you're a functional tester, you would be interacting with the mobile devices via the UFT tool. In this case, I want to go and just uh, start with the record and run settings for one of the scripts that I'm uh, about to show you. So the first thing that I'd do, I'd go to the mobile tab. Let's just enable it here. And I want to go and show you the list of devices that I have at my disposal. So a window from Mobile Center opens up in front of me, and now I can see all the devices that are part of my lab. And these devices are, you know, on-premise devices, there might be multiple location. I have access to all of them. I have complete control over them. But Mobile Center, this specific instance, has also been integrated with Amazon Lab. I have an account. I entered my credentials. There's a connector. One of the connectors is actually uh, talking to the uh, Amazon tenant that I have. And now I have access to a much longer list of devices. You can see them here. There's actually hundreds of devices at my disposal. And all of these uh, can execute and receive UFT scripts the same way that I would execute my scripts on my local mobile center devices. So uh, there is uh, great benefits to using the devices in, in the cloud now. Of course, there is a per minute cost that Amazon uh, charges for devices hosted in the cloud, as any cloud service uh, costs money. So probably the majority of the tests I would execute on my local devices, 
but for devices that I don't have uh, on-premise, I don't have access to, and if I want to do some uh, increased coverage, I would go use this integration, leverage the devices that I don't typically have access to. So that is the Amazon screen. Something else that I wanted to show you was our administration page. So if I'm a user and I log in to the Mobile Center UI, not through the functional testing tool, but to the actual UI of Mobile Center, I see three tabs, the application tabs, the devices tab, and the administration tab. Let's go over to the administration tab. On the left-hand side, you can see uh, device groups. That's something new that came with uh, Mobile Center 2.0. And here I can see a list of on-premise devices that are part of the shared device group. All these devices are part of the shared. I have nine devices as shared, and I created a London office group, and I have one device there. And I also have something called private groups. So what is a private group? When I install a connector locally, and perhaps on my laptop or on my desktop, the installer will ask me, do I want to have a private group um, on this environment? And then if I connect uh, a device or two to my laptop, I'll, I'll be the only one that has access to these devices. So as we said, we support sort of a distributed environment. The devices themselves can be located in multiple uh, locations and all control from a single point. So after I created the device groups and I dragged and dropped the devices to the different groups, and I'm happy with that, if I go back to the users tab, I'll be easily able to just drag the different groups to my users. And then certain users will be able to have access just to the subgroup of devices that I uh, intend them to have access to. Also, I wanted to show you the scheduling. So let's say, let's take this phone here. It's an iPhone. You can see here the reservations. I see all the details on the phone. In this case, what you can see is that this iPhone is an iOS 10 iPhone. So we support the latest beta version. I think they just started, it's still beta one. You can easily create a reservation. And after I create a reservation, it will be saved here. Uh, I will be able to see all of my reservation across all the devices, and an administrator, of course, can control it, clear the amount if I'm on holiday, and so on. I wanted to show you one more thing with the iOS 10, and that is our ability to completely control the device. So I'm just going to launch the remote view of the iOS 10 device. And just to show you that this is a, actually an iPhone 10, we can go to general about. You see the version. It's actually very responsive. Works really well. So that's our iOS 10. With that, um, I want to show you our Appium integration. So I'm going to go back to our remote desktop. In this, in this case, my client will not be the UFT functional testing. I'm going to open Eclipse. So if I am an Appium user, typically I work with one of the IDEs. In this case, I have Eclipse. And inside Eclipse, I have a typical Appium script It's going to test a mobile application. One of the first things that you need to do in Appium script, you don't have to change it a lot. So vanilla Appium scripts that you have already written will work against Mobile Center. The things that we need to uh, make sure that you have is, of course, the ability to connect to Mobile Center. So naturally, you need to uh, add the URL of Mobile Center. We also need to add the capabilities. That's choosing the device. And as I mentioned, there's a few different ways you can choose a device. No longer is it a specific UDID. You can choose by platform name, by device name, platform versions. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, you need to make sure that you have valid authentication. And then you can connect to Mobile Center as part of your script. 
and then your script will run like any other Appium script on all the different devices that you choose to run. So that's really it. That's the demo. Um, one more thing that I wanted to show, two slides that I have for you, is one recently we re um, Forrester released a wave for mobile front end uh, test automation tools. And uh, this the work that uh, was done them was used on Mobile Center 1.5, I believe, along, right? Evaluation. Since then, of course, we've released uh, 2.0. You can see that we're very uh, well placed here, and there's more that's coming all the time. So yes, uh, David, as you as you mentioned, that was based on 1.5, uh, yeah. it was actually a few weeks right before we announced 2.0, which introduced a lot of new major updates and cool features that Forrester got excited about even more, but it's not reflected in this one. But what we can see here is that when it comes to vision and strategy, we are the leader in the market, and I think the Forrester loved our strategy and vision when it comes to this end-to-end -end solution that we're offering this ability to come up with one integrated testing suite that goes end-to-end -end across the lifecycle with one solution that includes functional testing, security testing, and manual testing, the in-app analytics stuff, as well as this feedback to back into testing. I think this is something that they found really unique in the HP offering. And on top of it, they loved our sentiment analysis capabilities. A few words about our sentiment analysis capabilities. This is basically something, a solution, a SaaS solution, a cloud solution that is integrated into Mobile Center and allows us to go and analyze different reviews on the App Store and basically find some trends and provide you with the bottom line. For example, I can see that out of the different, the hundreds of reviews that I have on the App Store, people are complaining about a specific thing in the app that crashes all the time. So we know how to scan, you know, and find some keywords like crashes, associate them with stability issues, and see different trends and provide you with the bottom line and, and what are the issues that are uh, impacting your uh, user experience the most. And based on that, we can go and fix these issues, of course, and, and, and in our testing environment and basically roll out the new update to production. So David is just showing it, but this is basically what we're doing right now. And we are now expanding that also to social media. So basically right now, it's, right now we support the app stores. So we scan all the reviews on the app store. And if we see the word slow, for example, in this case, we can associate that with performance. If we see crashes, we associate it with that stability. And we can find some trends and some issues that users are experiencing. And again, the, the next phase will be basically to expand that to social media too. So when someone is complaining about our mobile app on Facebook, on Twitter, we're able to get this data immediately and basically focus and optimize our development efforts and QA efforts based on the trends that we're seeing on social media. So this is another cool piece that got Forza really excited about our solution. And again, we have been positioned as the leader when it comes to vision and strategy in the mobile testing space. So really, really a good momentum for HPE. We are really, really excited about you know all these customers that we're having that are joining uh, our community and and trying Mobile Center uh, to improve the mobile testing uh, cycles. And uh, with that, uh, I would like uh, to hand it over to Chris uh, for some questions. If we have some time, Chris, I think we have a few minutes till the top of the hour. Yeah, we certainly do. We'll we'll pull out the top couple questions here. Um, so uh, one question on top is uh, what operating systems, if you quickly go over, what operating systems for mobile are supported by Mobile Center 2.0? So we support Android 4.1 and above and iOS 6 and above and Windows 8.1 for 2.0. And when I say above, it includes all the beta versions that are out there. Super. Uh, there's a question about the integration of Mobile Center with, I guess I'll summarize in these questions, all that is the testing tools between UFT, BPT, and Sprinter, and how that integrates into that whole ecosystem of testing. So the integration itself is uh, very simple. Inside one of these, each one of these tools, all you need is a URL of Mobile Center and a username and password that's uh, valid to use and the tool will integrate with the mobile center. Actually, as a, a practitioner, you don't have to go to mobile center to do your work. 
the window of choosing a device and interacting with the device will be open for you with inside the tool. So we've uh, really coupled the integration well. And a question that I'm going to throw in there for all of the users as well is, you know, is there an online uh, series of documentation that someone can go to to see more details about all these points that you're making? Yes, so we do have a help site uh, where all our documentation is available. It's mobilecenter.help.com, uh, I believe. Uh, we can send it out at the end. Okay. This is really important for us. I mean, I do see a lot of questions coming around documentation and integration between the different tools and how to start and where's the quick start guide. So definitely, David, we, we need to, to let the audience know where is our mobile, our online help so they can go and get all this data because it's available online for everyone. So, yeah. All right. Uh, another question in there, too, is in addition to the operating systems, are the mobile browsers supported in Mobile Center 2.0? Yes, so part of uh, what we did in 2.0, and I didn't have enough time to go over it, is the ability to support native browsers. So a web script that you created can now run on uh, Safari on iOS and Chrome on uh, Android. Uh, does that also carry forward to the uh, Windows Mobile as well? Uh, Internet Explorer on Windows, yes. Awesome. Where does Mobile Center fit into continuous integration and continuous delivery? Good question. First of all, uh, just to update the URL, is mobilecenter.hpe.com. That's the right full URL, and it has all the get started and answers for what I'm guessing is going to be uh, most, if not all, of your questions. So. Uh, the different tools that you interact with do have a Jenkins or a, a maybe some other CI tool like a Bamboo plugin. So if you're using UFT or perhaps you're using Selenium or Appium to run your scripts against Mobile Center, then these tools, the testing tools, come with a plugin. You do have also a Mobile Center plugin for the use of uploading an app as part of the CI. So if you have just completed a build and now you want to upload the mobile app, to Mobile Center. We have both a Bamboo plugin and a Jenkins plugin, and then the tool itself will trigger the test that you needed to, tr to uh, run. So complete CI flow there. Great. And a couple questions trickling in as you're commenting on that. Will there be other plugins for other um, development tools such as TFS and others to join the ranks of Jenkins in the future? Yes, actually. So uh, we're looking at TFS as our next one and uh, Travis CI. Uh, the one following after that. And those are the ones we're targeting next. Excellent. Uh, let's see, I think we can find time for about two more questions. So let's go through here and see. Um, someone's asking, is there the need to use UFT when they're using Appium and Selenium tools for scripting uh, and work you could usage with Mobile Center? You don't have to use UFT. Um, you can use Appium and Selenium. That will work. If you're looking for record capabilities or you're looking um, to do things that perhaps you cannot do in Appium, like uh, leverage the object repository, that's when you would use UFT. Uh, but you are not forced to use it. Like I said, Appium and Selenium scripts work uh, fine if you just point it at Mobile Center and you execute the scripts. Uh, we will manage the labs of devices and make sure that the scripts run on the actual device, and the results get back to you. Cool. Uh, I think we can squeak in two more. Uh, can multiple mobile centers connect together for accessing devices in different locations? So the answer is yes, but not via multiple mobile centers. We have a software component called a connector. The connector is a small agent that would sit in any distributed location that you would want. You need to configure that connector to talk to the mobile center server. And then your devices can be located in multiple locations. Uh, and everyone that's accessing Mobile Center will have access to any one of these devices. Excellent. That was very cool. Uh, how often are new devices introduced to Mobile Center? So we continuously go through a certification pro process of adding new devices. And what we've seen is if the operating system is supported, uh, and 90% of the time, the device that has that operating system will be supported. So we have 
a supported and a certified sort of list. Supported is anything that has operating system matrix support. And certified, we have on our website, the mobilecenter.hp.com website, a list of all the devices that we certify. And we update that probably on a biweekly basis. Oh, that's great. And where can everyone listening today and people that listen to the future recording go to to learn about all the things that are planned for Mobile Center and where, you know, maybe get updates about where you are with certain things, whether it's new devices, uh, new OSs, or, you know, follow up on features such as, you know, integration with future CI um, environments? We have a forum at the community, at the HP Communities Forum. It's a mobile center forum. You can uh, certainly ask questions there that we, we answer. We do host uh, webinars such as this. Some of them are dedicated just to roadmap if you are looking for something further uh, out. Mm -hmm. And we have our content delivery mechanism called HP Live Network. That is where we post our connector software as well as post announcements around new versions of operating system that we uh, support. So I would recommend signing up for announcements in the HP Network platform. Just search Mobile Center and you'll see our page and you can sign up for announcements there as well. well that's fantastic. We are about five minutes past the hour. I think we need to wrap up in just a moment here. Um, I'd like to thank both Alan and David for joining us today. Um, you know, there may be a short survey after this to learn more about the tools and maybe have uh, the folks have a way to get some of these links out to everyone. Um, so again, thank you for joining us for the webinar today. And uh, please feel free to check in after uh, in a day or so for the link to the recorded session and share it with your friends and colleagues. Thank you very much. and Everyone have a fantastic day. Thanks, everyone. Thanks everyone for joining.